Hello again. It is October, and here in Rochester, New York, it's around 82, 83 degrees. It feels like summer. I know, cold weather is coming, but for now, we will enjoy it while it lasts. Welcome to all who have come to Emmanuel Church of the Deaf. I am the deacon, Pat Grayville. I am Father Ray Fleming. Welcome to all. Today is the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The theme remains the same as we draw closer to Advent. It is good for us. It reminds us of our responsibility and joy to follow Jesus. Amen. The spirit of joy is within us as we begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit to prepare ourselves for this sacrament we first turn to God to ask for his support and mercy Lord you came for us Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Christ you died on the cross to save us Christ have mercy Christ have mercy Lord you challenge and encourage us to love one another Lord have mercy Lord have mercy may Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and grant us everlasting life Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard 
that I had not done. Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do to my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea, its shoots as far as the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls? So that every passerby plucks its fruit. The boar from the forest lays its waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life. And we will call upon your name. O Lord of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. 
the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Our second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worth of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew that I will now present to you in American Sign Language. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, Hear another parable. Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. Put a hedge around it. Dug a wine press in it and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants and one they beat. Another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, 
they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that maybe some of you are thinking, that's good news? Oh, the man in that story. But let me explain a little bit more. In a vineyard, they grow grapes. But I don't have any grapes. So I'll use this. What does it remind you of? Adam and Eve. God grew the tree, told them, do not eat the fruit. Well, the devil came along. Hmm. God doesn't want you to be smarter than him. Go on, eat, eat the fruit. And finally they took a bite, and you know what happened in the rest of the story. And there at the end, the conclusion. That's not what we're going to be talking about. That's not what's happening today. So let's put that aside, and we'll focus on our readings. So the first reading in the Gospel talk about the vineyard. They use that imagery to represent God's people. God, his people. God created everything. The first reading shows the owner carefully preparing to make wine, watching over to make sure he has good fruit. When that didn't happen, he became disappointed. Uh, we sometimes experience disappointment. We feel it in our hearts. Uh, the world is a mess. I read the newspaper or social media, on TV, just constantly blasting us. Uh, I want the world to be at peace. This is awful. That's the same disappointment 
the man felt when he saw he had no fruits, just the wild, sour grapes. You know, and that's a good word for how we feel inside, sour, these negative thoughts. Sometimes, maybe we see children, our children, as they grow up to meet our expectations. But maybe as they grow, they don't stay with the church and they leave. Or they, you know, they wear weird clothes and they speak differently. We become disappointed. It's the same as that man. Maybe within us, we have hope. There will be successes in our life. Sometimes in life, we have hard times and we feel disappointed. And we push it down and we become sour. I thought about what we feel and I'm going to share some words from the Bible with you. Wrath. Jealousy. Envy. Hatred. I hate that. Despair. Eh, indifference. Eh, so it's someone else's problem. They'll take care of it. I don't care. Eh. Discrimination. People that are different than me, eh, I don't like them. It's like racism or autism. That's discrimination. It happens more and more. Injustice. No, I'm better. No, they're better. No, I'm better. These are the bad fruits. And we are guilty. We are sinners. Sometimes we think, uh, how can I grow good fruits? How? The readings. Mm -hmm. I've noticed. I cried, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord Jesus said, I chose you from this world to grow and bear fruit that will remain. In the second reading, St. Paul said, whatever is true, the truth is true, honorable, just pure lovely just beautiful lovely gracious with all of these They increase to excellence. And if you want that excellence, think about these things. St. Paul told us not to be anxious. Don't worry. Oh, but I need to be perfect. How do I be perfect? Jesus said simply, come and follow me. Are you anxious? Relax. Just believe. He is with us always, no matter if they're in the bad times or good times. He is always with us. He will never leave us. Inside, we want to feel the good fruits. Everything Paul had said, 
plus. You have to trust. I know he will succeed. He will. I have hope. And God continues to remind us that he loves us, that we have to love one another and love ourselves. That is the good fruits. That is what God wants. The sour fruits will pop up, but we receive the body and blood of Christ and it motivates us to go into the world and bear fruit that will remain. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for our church, which recently started to have special meetings with the Pope. We pray. We pay good things for Pope Francis and that the Holy Spirit will touch him and lead us so that we may become his holy people we pray to the Lord Lord receive our prayers for all of us that feel despair May we lift up to the Lord and trust that he will care for us, support us as we support those around us, and send us on our happy journey. We pray to the Lord, Lord, receive our prayer. We pray for our world in darkness, but may it become full of light from God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayers. For people who are suffering from poverty or discrimination and oppression in war and sickness, including the people from our church, like Mel Chua, Deanna, Di Vincenzo, Greg Rosa, and his wife, Paula, yes, I think that's, plus the many others, if there is anyone that we have forgotten, may they all regain their health in God's time. as he treats them through the nurses and doctors and caregivers that he has blessed. As we arrive in heaven, we pray to the Lord, Lord, receive our prayers. We remember all who have died, especially those from our community. Chuck DiVincenzo Nancy P. Terry. Evelyn. May they all rest in peace. And those that are heartbroken may receive comfort from the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. God, show us your mercy today for our prayers, of which we have many, so that we may know that you watch over us and that you will give us what we need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord amen the Lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord your son his death we celebrate in love his resurrection we confess with living faith and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope and so with all the angels and the saints we praise you as without end we acclaim holy 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 Lord God of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night of the Last Supper, at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he first took the bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper had ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Now we proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray 
that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the way that our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all, and with your spirit. Christ's peace is here. Share that peace with those around you. Peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you that cannot receive communion at this time, join me in this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me 
to be separated from you. Amen. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we've consumed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go now with peace in your heart, love and service to the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God.